Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're still in Vegas, y'all. Listen, this is the transparency trap. If I went off of what my DVR said, it was season two, episode 30. Yeah. <laughs> but we really know it is season three, episode 10. Listen, coming off the leg of what had happened in Vegas the night prior, we now are dealing with the aftermath. But let me go ahead and say this right now. Y'all some real ones, because last week, we forgot to change our background from yep. when we did Power. Mm -hmm. And none of y'all even judged us for nothing. it. Yeah, rock, roll, roll on what? I love y'all for that. But <laughs> <laughs> when we look back on it, we was like, we was like, God, don't we ain't changed background. And I said, we sure ain't going to record this all over again. Right. Mm -mm, this is, Hey, we do this stuff in one take. You get what we give. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do all that. But anyway, so like I said, picking up off of what had happened the night prior, so all of the men, except for Martell at this point, is outside on the basketball court. They're really not playing no ball. This is just their opportunity to talk through what the hell had just happened, right? So they're talking about, you know, Mel and Martell. I know where they are is they really, it's, it's intense and it's fresh and it's new. So then now they have to figure out this new normal. But we ain't know that bringing them together going to be like this. Oh, we like, knew it was going to be like that. Yeah. Because every time they get together, it's a cluster fuck. It really is. I'm like, can y'all <laughs> please just, like that one auntie and uncle that you love separately, but don't invite them to nothing together because yeah. you don't want your skit bucked up? Exactly. That's them. <laughs> so they get to speaking about that and how, you know, they wish things could be different and how things, you know, some of the things they feel like could have been done better. Right. And how Martel really, all the things he said he wasn't going to do. He ended up he doing. He ended up doing. Letting everything just explode or whatever. So then Martel comes on out and decides to join the fellas. Hey, fellas, what y'all talking about? Oh, they talking about you. you. <laughs> Listen, Martel came out there and everything on him was too small except for his hat. <laughs> I said, how did how are your flip flops too small too? We we just gonna need you to go up a side, just one, yeah. just one side. It don't mean you gain a weight, you know. It just means you got a little bit of muscle. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We gotta come up from slim fit. Yeah. <laughs> to the regular fit. Yeah. But why are we talking about apparel and whatnot? Check out the shirts, y'all. Like, y'all yeah, know yeah. us for our graphic tees and whatnot. Yeah. Good yeah. things come to those that hustle, man. That's and, so and true. I, and I show it for everybody. Yeah. Listen, I'm gonna leave a link down below with my discount code. At checkout, you can save you a cute little coin on your entire order. 15 percent, man. And it's owned. Get into it. Like I said, link's going to be down below. Yeah. But he came out there. I said, okay, how they going to handle this? I like the fact that they was like, oh, we're talking about you. So Maurice had a conversation with him. He was like, listen, what I'm about to tell you is not to hurt you or to belittle you or to correct you in any kind of way. I'm doing this because I've been where you are. Yeah. I know how it is to just come from a divorce, but you still got a child in the yeah. middle of all of this. And well, in his case, children. Right. And y'all gonna have to figure this stuff out or whatever. So, you know, Martel, you know, he kind of listened and whatnot. So then they get on the conversation about Marceau. And really the reason why we're all here is for their, their 14, 15, 14 15. anniversary. Yeah. One well, no, year anniversary or whatnot. So, you know, the men are telling him, you know, their piece and whatnot. So then Marceau gets to talking about the surprise therapy visit. <laughs> Marceau, in so many words, was like, I came, I saw, I conquered. I ain't going to do that skit no more. That's not for me. But Tisha seems to feel like we have a communication issue or whatnot. And even Martel had some good things to say to him about that. It was like, you may not think that y'all have a communication issue, but the fact that she brought you to a whole therapist to communicate to you mm -hmm. lets you know that there is an issue. That she's trying it. to keep the team together. Yeah, so... But however, when it was time for you to go, mm -hmm. you didn't want to go either. He didn't. He did not, but he went, though. Yeah. So then Marceau, you know, he was really giving Tisha her props, and one of the things that most attracted him to her was when they first met and got together, he was like, I will walk behind her and pretty much, like, confidence just radiated off of her. Like, mm -hmm. everything about her was she was sure of the person that she was. Right. And over the years, he's watched her become unsure about who she is, not confident, you know, kind of just dwindling away in that area in her life or whatever. He didn't say it in a way to demean her or anything. And he even talked about, like, the public speaking thing. Yeah, her he confidence. Was like, yeah. When it came time for her to do that, I started to see that take a hit on her because mm -hmm. that's not her strong suit. Me, evil teacher. Right. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So I get it, it. Yeah, when it comes to public speaking, yeah, I, I, yeah, 
You, yeah, it can mess with your confidence. For one, sometimes people don't accept you for who you are. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, like me, I know I chop on my words. I don't I say stuff right all the time. I lose my train of thought. You know, I stutter sometimes. But the one thing that I say for myself is I'm, I'm still a work in progress is that people if people don't set me for who I am, buck them. Buck them up against the wall with handcuffs <laughs> on and super glue on their lips. Because we ain't it's, for everybody. It's, yeah, because we not for everybody. It's time off for trying to impress people that don't like you for who you are. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But at the same time, like I talked about this last week, um, <clears throat> that being home and working from home, which I've always worked in the office, for uh, almost an entire year, <laughs> yeah. is I haven't had the code change. Like, even when I'm speaking on these videos, like, if I listen to myself back, I'm like, look, Dad, get your skit together and act like you got you a whole degree. Because the way you sound right now, you sound really... But at the same time, it's... I'm around my family who speaks like this. We're yeah. country as hell. They speak like this. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and then we have an ethnic tongue. So that's, that. you have all of that. And then I'm dyslexic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, you got all of that. So when I'm in the office, I have to think about what I have to say mm -hmm. and say it properly. And I haven't had the code change. And even then, <laughs> even then you, you, you still screw, screw up. You up. screw up. Yeah. So I get it. Like, you know, there's a lot of variables that go with public speaking. And then, mm -hmm. like you said, if you at the end of the day, I'm 43 years old. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna get I, much I, better because I, I don't right, care at right. this point. Yeah, you gotta set me as for me. Nah. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I mean that ain't the job I'm in. Say what you see is what you get. Hello. Yeah. Everybody got their insecurities. <laughs> right. Um, but y'all know what we're talking about. So we're speaking about that or whatever. So now we have the women. <clears throat> the women, hey, it's their time to make their appearance and whatnot. So they come out beside. You know, to go poolside or whatever. I will put it on Tisha's Tisha. That color on you, girl, is everything. I love a dark complexion with some bright A colors. Oh, it look good. And I like Tisha's body. I do. I think she looks really good in her clothing. Like, I'm going to get that one day. But anyway. Hell, you look good in there. What you be petting on too there, baby? So Thank don't, you. Don't sell yourself short now. You know. You know, I try. Yeah, don't sell yourself, huh? Hey, huh? What, what I tell them about vacation. Look, if y'all haven't watched our um, cruise vlogs from last month, I'm going to link them down below too. Y'all y'all need to see. Somebody was like, look at that. Did you get your A done? I was like, no, it's always <laughs> been this big. Y'all just see me from here up. But I said, whatever body I got is the body yeah, I'm serving. Yeah, you got a rocket, man. You I got a rocket. Yep. I served every you last bit it. of it. Uh-huh. But anyway, so women come out and everyone shows up except for Mel. So they're like, what's, what's going on with Mel? Why she's not out here? Y'all know Mel has to have her opportunity for y'all to, to search her out and figure out what's going on with her. So she's in her room kind of soaking a little bit. So Martel decides that I'm a volunteer like, to go and check I on All y'all, y'all gonna let him go? Seeing that they don't argue and fuss and fight. The only thing they didn't do was throw hands. <laughs> and y'all want him to go back there? Y'all gonna let him go back there by himself? I said, Destiny, this, 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 this the time when you be like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah, I, go. I got this. So Martel goes back there. Knocks on the door, and she was like, yeah, come on in. And he was like, well, I came to check on you. Everybody out there waiting for you to meet. Every time he starts talking, I think about Ike Turner where he get real hype. <laughs> well, Ike Turner be like, yeah, yeah. Ike Turner. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'm out there in that San Antonio. You know, <laughs> you know, I bought some jewelry and some, some other shit. But I don't know what. That when he started talking, I think about Ike Turner every time. I mean, you know, they out there, they they, they, they waiting for y'all <laughs> out there. They, well, who been looking for me, Mark? You know, all the girls, all, all the girls. girls. Yeah, and they ask about you, yeah. Me? <laughs> I'm concerned about what you are, what you doing up in this room, you know? So, <laughs> I just cracked myself up on that one. But anyway, uh, so she gets to talking about, let's, pretty much let's discuss last night all over again and why I blew up the way that I did. She said, my triggers are my children. Mm -hmm. And my music. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to laugh, but I did. Um, so she was like, you know that every time you say something about my children, you say it as if I'm I don't unfit, know. I don't know I got I don't know kids. I have four children like or the people that I leave and leave our children into their care. They are not capable. You know what you're doing when you do. He was like, but 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 we do, we do, we do, we got we got four children. You got four children, I got four children, you know? <laughs> I'm like you know what you're doing, Martel. <laughs> yeah. But then she said, then when you talk about my songs, you talk about my songs, I said, that BS. 
Well, yeah, well, yeah, me, me, me. But she did, because at first she kept denying that the song wasn't about her, about Montel. And then in this episode, she said, I didn't tell my kids it was about you. Thank you. It is about him. Just, Why are we just, even lying yeah, about that? Just be straight with that, that it's about him. Come on, that's it. It's almost like catching somebody cheating with their drawers down. You didn't see that. Yeah. We know the song is about <laughs> I mean, why is that? What? Why, why is it even a thing? But they both they they both do the thing to each other. They like they've been together long enough that, that they, they know, know they know what buttons to press to send each other off. I mean, we know what buttons to press on each other to yeah, send each other off. Absolutely, you know that. You just know not to touch those buttons unless you really want this work. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that day <laughs> they both wanted that work, and I was scared for both of them because I was like. Martel looked like he, I ain't gonna say it. I don't wanna put that on nobody because that's a character flaw that I don't wanna put on nobody. But, so Martel, he blows up. Y'all know, because she knows what buttons to push with him too. So he blows up and I will give him credit that eventually he gathered himself and he removed himself from the situation. But not before Bell threw another jab at him. And it was the fifth child. Yeah. <laughs> and when she, that's when it all. That's when it all went to hell. Then that's when he went from I'm walking away. I'm walking away. I like, what? The, like what? What? <laughs> what? So he heads back to her, and they fussing, and they fighting. And he says, so, 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 you always want to talk about, about my, 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 my side, my chick. side, but, 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 but now you, you trade got, places. You got two sides <laughs> you, you, <laughs> two you, people. You, you, you mad at me because I cheated, but but you gonna be the person that people cheat with. Cause they got two fiance. Uh huh. Yep. Said, and then he started naming names, but they started bleeping. They bleeping the names. And I was like, I was looking at his lips like, What he say? Did you say? <laughs> did you say B Billy? <laughs> Tyrone? <laughs> Is that what you say? Wind back. Man, y'all need to drop them names. I want to know who these people are. He's and she was, but she never denied the guy. She didn't deny. She was she like, they, they don't they have no, no fi fiance. They don't, they're not with nobody. They got two fiance. Both of them got fiances, and you over here judging but, me. But said, however, if they didn't disclose that to her before they got in the draws, then maybe she don't know. But I, but I think she. Default, but but if Martell know, I mean, Martell know. She, I'm pretty sure she know too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so they really just into it. Destiny ended up, because at this time, now the producers don't got real concerned. They done went out there and told Marso. Why they here. always call Marso <laughs> to calm him down when them two had had the most beef on the show <laughs> about his 26 women that he decided. Women's. That he, women's that he, that he know about some stuff that he know about, about Marso that he won't say. But y'all use him to come and break up the fights. Yeah. So they ended up like Marcel got Martel, but at the same time, Destiny had Martel as well. And I was like, it, it kind of, it's kind of odd when you see it, but we have to remember, because I keep forgetting as well, that Destiny and Martel were friends before. Yeah, I forgot about that too. And um, <clears throat> her and Mel were. So I'm like, but what were you gonna do with this? I guess you. I guess she was trying to reason with him, not letting him get too far. But then the the argument went from Mel's room all, all the way, way to, out the, to kitchen. the kitchen, <laughs> and they still going off. And I said, first of all, I get a little concerned when people are in the kitchen arguing, not arguing, arguing, arguing. because there's weapons in that kitchen and knife forks. I hope Ooh. they. Ain't, I hope they ain't that at that point. Martel if, scares me. If they at that point where they feel like they have to pull weapons, y'all definitely don't need to come in each other's presence anymore. Yeah. So then we 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 switch <clears throat> things a little bit, but then we have Mel still in her room, kind of sulking, and all the women go and kind of gather around her, and she's telling Tisha, "I'm I swear I think that there's a part in here that we missed, or they just trying to play us right now." But she's saying that she didn't know that Martel was gonna be there. But I swear I thought that, that Martel she said she he talked to her about coming. And she said she didn't know she was coming. And the fact that she said she was going to come a day late because her and Destiny need to come together. I don't know, but she said that she Somebody wished, lying. That's all I got to say. <laughs> she wished she knew that he was going to be there because she would have considered probably not going because this is the reason why she probably would have made another decision and not be there. 
But at the same time, she was like, if it gets any worse, pretty much, I can be up out of here tonight, today, deuces. I'm like, at this point, why we got to wait for something else to happen? Just gone. <laughs> the way I'm set up, that's why when we go on family vacations and things like that, Lynette always books her own place. People think that I'm going to be like stuck up or I don't want to stay with people. No, because when the chaos happens, I want to be where my well, peace I, well, is. Well, I can leave to go to peace. Yeah, I need to be where my <laughs> peace leave. is. And the last time that happened, I almost gave in. And the aftermath let me know, Lynette, you be on it, girl. <laughs> you be on it. <laughs> and everybody ended up coming over there where we were. Uh, yep. Because <laughs> they tried to avoid the aftermath, too. Like, nope, y'all can't come up no, over here. No, y'all can't come over here. No, we, we sleep on the float. No, no, no the hell you're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you stay over there where all nope. the crazies is at. Cause nope. I'm not nope. doing this. But, um... So we ended up saying, okay, let's go ahead and play this game. What was it? Wild with the Whitlows? Pretty much a pretty much it was a true for their drinking game. It was a game for them to, to get in their business. business to find out what's going on in their relationships. So That's all what it of was. the all of the questions kind of went around, like you said, getting in their business. About the sex. Wanting life, to know about their sex life. Cheating. I love how T-shirt Barso was like, there's a lot of questions about who would do what and how. Are they trying to invite us into, into a, a, to a, a threesome? threesome or foursome or orgy or something? Because we're not interested. Tisha was like, uh-uh, it ain't that kind of party. Uh-uh, that is not going to I said, but y'all been talking about this the whole time, too. So maybe they on with y'all, though. Because <laughs> I was taking that she was saying that even if they was considering the threesome, not, them. not with y'all. Oh, no, you don't do it with no friends. No. Nah. No. Nah. Mm -mm. But they technically ain't friends. They just got to the group. The but way I, she runs her mouth? But I think, that, yeah, the way that they move. Yeah. Yeah. So the object of the game is answer the question or take a shot. So she made these drinks and whatever. So we going to get there. We learned a lot that we probably shouldn't know because I have more questions now. Maurice, when the hell did you sleep with six women in yeah, one night? Yeah, in one night. Yeah. I my give you your dog. props for stamina, my dude. Right. Because <laughs> if you put in that work work, how you get past you the third get one? six. Yeah. About <laughs> six. Man. Kimmy said... I want one of them six ones. <laughs> nope. Because she, she said it sounded like you was making your rounds. I mean. So I'm trying to figure out, was this before Christ Maurice? During so, Christ Maurice? Or in between marriages Maurice? <laughs> Which one was it? Or so was to say it, you might have backed your head? <laughs> or was it during the first one Maurice? See, because Wanda keeps getting on Marceau about these 26 women. So maybe he would say, maybe she on the wrong brother. <laughs> maybe he just switch over to Maurice. <laughs> Is he true? You got the M's wrong? <laughs> like, <sighs> what's going on with your Maurice? I'll just play it, but Maurice my dude. But yeah. six? And one night. One night. That's Wow. That, that, that that's, that's some work, bro. That's some work. Yeah, man. Now, yeah. the next question I would have had, I would have made it up on the spot. What's your body count? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's that but was that was song said, What's your body, body count, count ninja? <laughs> so they have double ditches. <laughs> so, <laughs> hmm. uh, so then they got into the questions of, you know, are you happy in your relationship right now? Everybody took the shot except for Marceau. He was being an a-hole. Uh -huh. And Joking. he took it he took his shot last or whatever. That's all Tiffany needed because she needed uh -huh. some ammunition to start. Yeah. Mm, processing and, and just when Destiny called her a Karen, that took me out. But then, this is when Tisha pissed me all the way off. Tisha, my girlfriend Nicole had hit me up earlier today after I, because she'll talk to me until after I watch it. So then we sit there and we talk. And she was like, look at that. Somebody in one of the, the groups said that when Tisha gets some alcohol in her, she turns into Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> And she showed she up. Knows. Yes, yeah, yeah. So well, the apple don't fall too far from the tree. No. Oh well, no. yeah. Granny Smith produced Granny Smith. Yeah. So she turns to Maurice, and she said, "With the permission of Kimmy, I want to ask Maurice a question since we're dealing with marriages, and you know, as much as we're getting information, I want to take some information too because you know, this marital thing is some work." Do you think that you could have saved your marriage? Because according to Kiowa, she said that she believed that y'all marriage could have been saved if you didn't walk away and throw in the towel. It's like, hmm. 
What kind of question is that to ask? Yeah, in front of his in front of his present wife. wife. So what if he said, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we could have worked it out, which means that they would have worked it out, and it would be no be- Kimmy. Yeah, so. <laughs> so my question now is, Tisha always says that she wanted a sister. Do we have the wrong sister that you wanted? So you're trying to think she wants she wanted Did Kyle? you want Kiowa? I don't know, man. And that wouldn't be a wrong response because whoever your family member is with, usually you gravitate to them and y'all, you know, you get your own connection and bond with them outside of yeah. their relationship. So there wouldn't be a wrong answer because you can actually have both of them in their, in your life, right. just in their respective places. Like my uncle, before he died, him and my aunt, and notice how I call him my aunt, they hadn't been together for years, but right. that's my aunt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing stops that. She's invited to every freaking function that we have. <laughs> yep, but we just can't talk about him. But we don't talk about him. Yeah, we can't talk about and him. And we didn't we... invite them together. Right. Like y'all got to do with Mel and Martell. <laughs> so, yeah. So, if you ever wanted to know how to handle a situation like that, and you're close to both people, yeah. Pick one. Yeah. And they should be able to understand. Mm-hmm. But you pick, you invite them to the one that's most closely to their interests or what their heart is. Um, like, <clears throat> I'm not going to invite my uncle to the baby shower. I'm going to invite my aunt. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. So, on to that, I I was just uh, taken aback. And even Kimmy in her confessional was like, like what the hell? Like, What, what kind of question is what that? What freaking question is that? And yeah, that, that's like I'm being, you know, we at my mama house and she asking me, hey, you think you could have worked it out with some of your older girlfriends? In front of my wife, like, huh? Like, what do you mean work, huh? Don't you go to sleep tonight. <laughs> don't you, don't, if you get diarrhea in the middle of the night, <laughs> something, yeah, that was, a, do that was a terrible question. I was yeah, terrible, Tish. Yeah, so they was, you know, they had different questions about and, it. But t- um, and Jamie Bach Fox said, blame it on the alcohol. So we're going we gonna to do that. Yeah. But alcohol is a truth serum, though. It brings out who you really, really are. Really, <laughs> yeah. really. Or or a lot gives you the confidence to say what it is that you really wanted to say. Mm-hmm. So, Marceau got real disrespectful, in my opinion, when it came to destiny. Because along the line of questions, and like my husband said, when you get to drinking, that them loose lips, because they say a drunk tells no lies. He gets to asking destiny, so what did you do to make that man leave you? Oh, I'm just playing. No, you weren't playing. No, you weren't playing. You, yeah. <laughs> and she was like, what? And then everybody said, so what is, why is it that the woman always got to do something to make the man, or we don't even know what happened. We don't real know talk. what happened, yeah. But I will say this, from the jump, y'all saw it, we saw it. I don't think her husband had any interest in making him a part of his world. They moved into his house that he never made room for her. Never made space in his closet for her. And they married. It just seemed like he was never interested in making this thing a solid circle. So you think he made a rash decision to marry her? I think he <laughs> loved her. I think that they had really good times together. But it could have been one of those things that their relationship only worked as a as a distance relationship. Mm-hmm. As a girlfriend and boy. And we, and we talk about it all the time. Is like Some people are just never meant to be married. And... Mm-hmm. Marriage, marriage do look good when you looking from the outside in, and marriage is good, and yes. but it's work, it's a lot. and it's different than somebody being your girlfriend or your boyfriend and your husband and your wife. Is is the rules are like totally, <laughs> totally different. You basically relinquishes your independence. Now it's no longer you; it's us. So you have to move as a unit with the us. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that can be such a challenge. So I think that probably was his challenge that he was so used to being independent, yeah. a bachelor. I can come and go as I want. This is my closet. This is my bed. So and my house. So you go my way. So like you said, it never became to us. Yeah, I mean, and I can relate to that. Like, I've always told people, I could never be married to anybody but you. Like, you are, we we in sync. Like, our life. I'm that special kind of guy. Yeah. Because <laughs> I never wanted to get married because I move like that, too. Independent. Very independent. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because when people watch us on our um, vlogging channel, they're like, y'all do everything together. No. No. <laughs> yeah, y'all. It looks like that because that's, that's, that's what yeah. we have to so, show y'all. But 
But the no. flip, but the flip side, of, I, I don't want you to think that you lose all your independence when you get married. No, you, you don't. still give the person their independence, but you still got to think about us. Yeah, there's us. So, yeah, so your independence doesn't give you a license to fuck us over. So your independent decisions got to be for the benefit of us and not just you. Yeah, I remember when we first got married. I used to look at him like, "Why are you still here? <laughs> like, why are you gonna go somewhere? Like." No, I'm here. <laughs> like, it was like, since we stood up, I'm on we at first got married. At the time, I was working in construction. And this guy um, lived oh in my North God. Carolina. <laughs> lived in North Carolina. They came down from North Carolina to Richmond to do construction. So he brought his daughter's boyfriend to get a job. And so he pulled out an application that morning and he told him, said, hey, you can just ride around Richmond or you can sit in the parking lot. So he decided to ride around Richmond. So when he rode around Richmond, he got lost. He didn't know how to get back to the job site. So what he did was he decided to drive back to North Carolina <laughs> and Who left him that? there. Left him there. And so he told me about it. And me being the person I am, I don't want to see you hurt. I don't see that. Stan is a fixer. So I was like, hey, bro, I got you. And hey, if the car don't get back over here, I'll take you back to uh, North Carolina. North Carolina from Richmond yeah. is four hours. <laughs> so... I got on the phone and I told Lynette, I was like, well, I'm going to be late coming home because I got my boy here. I'm going to take him back to North Carolina. Like, like, hell you is. I said, wait. Come she again? said, first of all, you don't really know them. And then you're going to drive four hours to take him back home. And four hours back. And she was like, no, tell him the best that you can do is put him up in a hotel. And I was like, God darn. So when I went back and I talked to him, I was like, bruh. I, I can't I, I can't take you back. I said what I can do is I can put you up in the hotel. And at that point he was pissed because he was he took my word. He was thought he was going home. And so we end up, you know, putting him still putting him up in the hotel. Uh -huh. And then the next day we got back to work, he was like, bruh, you did the right thing listening to your wife. Yeah, because he yeah, would have been. He had been, been he had been married longer than me. And I had just got married. So he was like, you was right in listening to your wife. No, yeah, cause I, but I was thinking about my independence and what I wanted to do to help out this brother, but I wasn't thinking about her. Mm -mm. Yeah. And I said, it could have been a whole setup, you know, because the way my mind is, yeah. <laughs> everything is a setup. I got yeah. I got to I got to vet all that information out yeah. first. Yeah, so I didn't mean to go way down that rabbit hole. But that was yeah. a good rabbit hole to go yeah. into. So, <clears throat> where did we end off at? Talk about uh, the Maurice thing and whatnot. So, now... We dealing with the men and the women get ready to separate. They're going to have their... The thing that Tisha asked Maurice to watch Marso about. So the men go their way. The women go their way. They getting all dressed up. But it was funny because while they're getting dressed, Marso is talking to Tisha and he is stressed the buck out. Yeah. He was like, if I felt like any of this stuff was going to happen this weekend with Martel and Mel, I would have never... This is our anniversary. Y'all already knew. Y'all already know how they act when they get together. He said they fussing, <laughs> they fighting. He said he my hair. He hurts. just said I just need one of them to be an adult. Be an adult. <laughs> I said, listen at you. Yeah. <laughs> so then we see Lou, baby. Okay. We've already told y'all when it comes to us. And how we move with our friends. Because most of the time, if Stanley is friends with the guy, I'm friends with the wife or the girlfriend or whatever. Right. At some degree, we don't cross-reference information. No. It's just not what we do. No. If, if, if somebody tell him, Skit, you may think I know. But I don't, I don't back. know. <laughs> and vice versa. <clears throat> it's, it's it's just not our way. It's not right. our flow. Like right. we don't pillow talk about other people's business. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't get it. But anyway, so this is exactly what Lou did. So Lou is in there talking to Tiffany, and I said, "Y'all are so equally yoked because both of y'all messy as hell, and you the one that told her about monster vaping. I yep. already mm -hmm. know because that's the reason she ain't want to <laughs> give it up because she got that skit from you, hmm. and you got it from whoever you got it from." But anyway, so they land, he's laying across the bed. Tiffany is curling her hair. And they're pretty much like talking down on all, all of the, the rest couples of them. Yeah. that are out there like, and how they don't have communication, communication issues. Like, and then she gets to talking about, you know, 
And Tisha, uh, no, Lou had the conversation about what happened on the basketball court. And did you know that, you know, Tisha surprised him with a therapy session because they don't have communication. And he said that she yeah, has confidence no, issues. And, and It's like, bro. That ain't even how it was said, yeah, though. And, and you brought that back to her? Yeah. And she, you you could see, the, you know how you had the monkeys in, in your head that's... Yeah, because the thing about it, when you when you around your fellas, when when the fellas open up, because we don't like the talk. I say, let them talk. So when the fellas, when fellas open up, they open up with the intent of you to be confidential about the information. Mm -hmm. So the fact of bringing that back, if I, if I, if, a violation. If, if I was in that, in that, bro, yeah, you wouldn't hang out with us no more. Ever. It's done. It's done. Mm -mm. We'll go out together as couples and eat, and that's it. Now, what I'm not saying is no brother can't come into the circle and tell me that, hey, I'm cheating on my wife. And that's a dealt with. Yeah, respect for me to hold that. Because at that point, you disrespected me and you disrespecting her because you put me in a situation whereas I have to basically stay face to your wife knowing that you fucking her over behind her back and I have the information to stop it. So basically, I'll be like, "Nah, bro, you need to, you need to tell her, or we can't be friends no more. I, I'm, I, I can't live with that. Mm -mm. That's different. You ain't dropping that trash. Yeah, that's here. different. But if, if a brother is just venting about his relationship and stuff like that about his wife, I am not gonna take that back because we all vent about our spouses. <laughs> you know, when you said that, you know, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah, that's. But when you said that, it reminded me of the story. <laughs> we got a story on that. I'm gonna link it down below. When we went out one night with our friends, but they invited some of their friends that we really don't know like that, and we ended up in the middle of a whole situation where yeah. it came out that night that one of the dudes that was with us had a whole stripper pregnant. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. link that below because y'all need to hear this story because it was so freaking unbelievable that night. Yeah. I was like, how we was did... like, We was there in headlights. We was like, like, how did we get here? Like we just came out to eat, and they wanted us to provide some advice. I'm like, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say here. I don't. There's a whole baby on yeah, the way, right? <laughs> but it, yeah, we are gonna link that below. Y'all gonna get a, get a good key, key out of that story right there. So now the women are out at, and this they went to like this like, I call it a titty bar. That's how old I am. A titty bar where they had hookah, drinks, or whatever. So the, the women have an opportunity to kind of round table. And they're just speaking about, you know, kind of what happened the night before. You know, just bringing everything full circle. Just kind of like, you know, this is the anniversary weekend. Time to let loose. So they, But they... they... <sighs> opportunity for Tiffany to be messy. Yep. That's pretty much what had happened. So they get to talking and talking about... um. Um, Tisha said, you know, I, I possibly want to surprise my husband with a vow renewal. And here's Tiffany. Huh? Why would a vow renewal? You know, and you might and not well, want to do that. You may I not want to do that because um, my husband said that y'all already in therapy for communication issues. It's like, what? <laughs> and so then Destiny was like, but that's something you did as well. Like you popped a no, whole wedding on, yeah. <laughs> on your husband and he didn't know and that seemed to work out fine. But the whole thing is Tiffany is still talking to these ladies or talking about these ladies as if her relation and Lou is doing the same thing. Their relationship is the know all be all is mm. the blueprint of how everybody should be. Their communication mm -hmm. is stellar. Like their transparency is everything. They talk about everything and they're upfront about everything. Mm. And everybody else, if you're not like me, can kick rocks. Trust me. I have dealt with people like that that get married for like 15 seconds and uh -huh. they are experts. And, and they are an expert uh -huh. in the field of marriage. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like you've been married like Two seconds. They turn into Ayana. I'm gonna fix your marriage. Yeah, I'm like <sighs> wait until you experience a death. Wait until you experience like a miscarriage or uh, a birth or mm -hmm. some financial troubles. troubles. Yep. Talk to me then. Or somebody gets sick. Talk to me then because until then you still in the honeymoon phase. Yeah, because the 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 thing is there is no perfect relationship. Everybody everybody has flaws in their relationship. Matter of fact, that's what keeps you humble. You sure do. And don't yeah. say marriage ghost about right. anything because 
You don't know. Yeah. That's why I don't ever, I don't ever judge nobody's marriage. I don't. I mean, you I can, do. You, you can tell her, even her, I tell her that I said I don't because I believe in that scripture which said, don't judge because you're going to be judged. So the same way you judge, it's going to be measured back to you again. So even with Martell and all the cheating he did, I've never judged him because I can be subject to that too. But you won't. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. I have no intent of right. doing it, but I'm not going to judge him. So, Tiffany is still on her this, that, the third. And so, Destiny was like, you, you, you're you a real Karen over there. <laughs> and and then you start to see Mel. Mel has this thing she does. She I protects was, her, yeah. She, she protects, protects the hell out of Tiffany. Yeah. I said, until you hear that Tiffany called you a whole side chick. Yeah, that's your friend that you're protecting <laughs> that referred to you as a side chick. At the table. And I was saying, I'm so proud of Martel. Because Martel was like, no, she's not a side chick. That's my ex-wife. I was like, thank you, Martel. Because mm -hmm. she was really trying it. So, then, here she is. Oh, well, Lou said on the basketball court that, you know, that your husband said one of the things that he didn't like is that your confidence is going down. Like, you're not a confident person. And you need that's something that you need to work on. So, Tisha is like... Uh, what? That's the first time I've heard that. She said, that. that's the first time I've heard. So maybe y'all need to work on y'all communication because it's clearly an issue for him that he thinks that you have confidence issues and whatnot. And this is when Destiny like lost it. This Destiny was like, so you keep bringing information to people in a group of new people that you don't even know. And, and at the point where she feels uncomfortable or a little slighted by the information... Pretty much that's your cue to shut the fuck up. Yeah. So Destiny was like, you're not good at reading the room. At all. Yeah. At all. So then, here comes Tiffany. <clears throat> you know what? Right now, all of the places that you've ever stayed at, Atlanta, Jacksonville, I'm just naming places now. I don't know what, <laughs> what else she said. said. Huntsville, Jacksonville, Atlanta, all of those are coming out all at one time. I mean, um, mm -hmm. Destiny saying, I would drag you. You and all, all of them. them. <laughs> right here. Right now. So here's Mel. But why are you... Why? And she said, but why are you always defending Tiffany? Tiffany is over here just like stirring the pot using mm -hmm. that good thickening. Like it, the spoon going to stand up in this pot in a minute. Mm -hmm. And you're... But but she means well and she's um, she's just an upfront and direct person. No, she no. thinks she's better than everybody in yes. the group. And that's one thing I I don't do that. Don't come into our circle thinking you better than us. I can I can read that from a mile yep. away. If you think you better, yeah. Mm -mm. Well, obviously this ain't the group for you. Right. So then Tiffany asks, um, she <clears throat> going off the information that her husband said, but at the same time conjuring up her own thing. Um, Latisha has said something about you know. It was tough. You know, thank God we had kids. You know, they talked about that whole thing. And so here go Tiffany. So you stayed because of the children? So you stayed in your marriage because of the children? She was like, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, yeah, that was kind of like our grounding <clears throat> is that we need to figure this thing out for the children. And thankfully we worked past it and we're getting better. But no, I didn't just stay in my marriage yeah, because, because I have children. children. Yeah. You know, no, that's not it. I'm like, Tiffany. Ah, uh, but listen, when this gets back to the men, like my husband said, you kicked out the group for forever. Yeah. Or they're not going to say nothing around, around you. you no more. Because you're yeah. a whole bit. Yeah, yeah, you don't do that. Yeah, I'm like, nah. first of all, wouldn't man, man gossips like that? <laughs> I have never... So I just I just hope that's not who he is. I'm just, I'm just hoping that's something that the producers having him to do. To carry on the drama of the show, you can't make me do something. I just, yeah, I hope that's like not that. you, Lou. That yeah. you don't do that in your in your normal life. That you take what the bros say and bring it back to the women. But this is what got on my nerves. So Mel said, <clears throat> "I think that y'all need to listen because she's giving y'all some news that y'all could use as a person that's been divorced. Maybe this is information that you just need to hear." Pull her to the side yeah. by herself. Don't say it out when in public. When is this productive? Yeah. When is this ever productive? Right. I'm like, what is what is this hard on you have for Tiffany that she can she can do no wrong? Right. Because if you really cared about Tisha's then relationship, pull me. You would have pulled her to the side by herself and be like, yeah. Hey, my husband was talking to her on the court and he said such and such. 
because I want to make sure y'all relationship is good. Yeah. But you blurt it out to everybody. Yeah. And even bring it. Even us on that's on this. the other side of the TV. <laughs> yeah, I was hot. Yeah. I like Destiny's top though. Um, I said, go ahead, you work in that outfit. But yeah, that was basically what we got. I thought we was gonna get a little bit more than this because we didn't even see what the men got into. When nah, they we didn't see. Yeah. We stopped at this messy a Karen. I'm gonna probably start calling. T um, Tiffany Kern from now on. <laughs> but um, it was a decent episode. Yeah. Decent. Like, it was pretty much the Mel and Martell show has taken over again. Yep. Uh, straight from the VA. <laughs> the dirty, dirty south. Two, two down. Holla! Woo!